doesn't make you a victim. You make yourself a victim by not driving a fresh nail into your choice sin every day or a thousand times a day and fighting your sin until it's dead. I wanna make this as clear as humanly possible that you cannot be an LGBTQ Christian. No genuine follower of Christ can glorify sin and actually be saved. And thank God the woman you're about to see understands that truth. I don't care how upset and triggered and in your feelings you wanna get, it is what it is. And this lady's name is Rosaria Butterfield, a former English English professor that used to engage in homosexual behavior, but thankfully she repented of those sins and found Jesus. Now Rosaria is on fire for the Lord, and I think y'all will really appreciate this testimony and warning to churches today. I'll save my two cents until afterwards. Let's get it popping. God has allowed me to be a wife and a mother and a grandmother. a pastor's wife, and a servant in the church. I count my family and church as God's greatest earthly blessings to me. And I have come to learn that while homosexuality is part of my biography, it is not part of my nature. But the world that we live in, our anti-Christian age, disagrees. It believes once gay, always gay, along with a host of other lies. If I had a dollar for how many times some gay Christian told me that my problem is internalized homophobia, I'd be a really wealthy woman. Indeed, five lies of our anti-Christian age have coiled their way from the world to the church. And I have nothing to stand on. I used to believe all of these lies as once. And what are the five lies? Well, we just covered one of them. Homosexuality is normal. The second lie is that pagan spirituality is kind and inclusive. The third lie is that feminism is good for the church and the world. That should get a little something out of you guys. I'll take it. The fourth lie is that transgenderism is normal. And the fifth lie is that modesty for women is outdated and dangerous. These lies which have entered the church and the Christian college have one thing in common. They discourage repentance of sin, and they encourage the pride of victimhood. And these lies have a subtle appearance because Satan is a liar who specializes in the persuasive lie of the half-truth. Let me give you some examples. Have you ever heard that same-sex attraction is a sinless temptation and only a sin if you act on it? Or that people who experience same-sex attraction are actually gay Christians called to lifelong celibacy, or that people who experience same-sex attraction rarely, if ever, change and therefore should never pursue heterosexual marriage, or that sex and gender are different and that God doesn't care about whether men live as men and women live as women because all you need to do is grow in the fruit of the Spirit as though the fruit of the Holy Spirit can grow from sin. I have heard all of these lies, and just in the last year, from Christian ministries. And this is where I name names, and I'm an English professor, so I call this citing my sources. <laughs> Revoice. Preston Sprinkle's Exiles in Babylon conference sponsored by his heretical Center for Faith, Sexuality, and Gender and crew. I got three seats, people. And I have believed these lies too, and not only as a Christian, and I have repented publicly as a Christian in my book to you in articles, and these people can do the same. We don't throw people away, but without repentance, we don't trust them. We trust repentant saints. 
not just people with flashy ministries. <laughs> Biblical doctrine matters, and it sets the course for your life. Christian compassion for the sinners like the sinner I used to be means walking with them through the gritty battle of hating and fighting sin through the power of Christ and living for righteousness through his Holy Spirit. Christian compassion does not coddle, humanize, or domesticate sin. Christian compassion does not believe that man is more merciful than God. Christians do not encourage sinners to come out as gay or trans in order to be quote unquote missional. This is a mission that leads everybody to hell. And if you are a Christian whose indwelling sin is marked by sexual or gender confusion, I really do get it. I've made that case. But be warned, there is a particular way that empathy with people who sin in the same way that you do works against your sanctification and their salvation. The biblical truth is that homosexuality and transgenderism are found in the flesh, forbidden in the law, and overcome in the Savior. Do we measure up? No, he measures up for us. The fact that flesh loves sin doesn't make sin lovable. As a believer, you cannot have a secret love of sin and an authentic love of Christ. I stole that line from my husband. He said it last week in his sermon. <laughs> the Puritan Thomas Watson says, Christ is never loved till sin be loathed. And the fact that you did not choose the sin of your flesh does not make it somebody else's responsibility. Sin doesn't make you a victim. You make yourself a victim by not driving a fresh nail into your choice sin every day or a thousand times a day and fighting your sin until it's dead. God established a natural order in the creation of male and female that is good. And you will be the man or woman that God made you to be here on earth and in heaven and in the new Jerusalem or hell with its eternal fire. God's pattern of male and female finds its earthly purpose in biblical marriage. And a world that denigrates biblical marriage or delays it unnecessarily or grows in its homosexuality and transgenderism is a world cursed, not blessed. And what about the people who will be single, either because of widowhood or providence? Singles are needed and beloved in the family of God. So, what about you, dear Liberty students? Are you crushing sin in Christ? or coddling it through some of the trash theology that I mentioned before that masquerades as Christian. May God give you strong faith, faith selfless courage, and wise discernment as you answer the most important question, and I want you to answer it today. I want you to answer it right now. Choose this day whom you will serve. The lies of our anti-Christian age, the idol of LGBTQ+, or the God who made you male and female, image bearers all, divinely patterned for the purpose of building strong Christian marriages, families, churches, and communities, and calling those outside of Christ to repent of sin and come in where even in suffering, it is safe and good and purposeful. So it's my question to you. Choose this day whom you will serve. Thank you.
Yes, ma'am. Say it louder for the people in the back because the entire world needs to hear this. That right there was gooder than chicken, as I like to put it. And God bless and protect Rosaria, her entire family, for showing what real courage, boldness, and conviction for biblical truth looks like. Folks these days got things twisted. From the media to the White House, these serial deceivers like Joe Biden that keep encouraging sexual sin and mocking God, turning Resurrection Day and, and what we call Easter into Trans Visibility Day or these pastors in the pulpit that refuse to preach the truth, they can keep chin boogieing and gaslighting all they want, thinking that they're succeeding at their propaganda at pushing their narrative, but a scorching hot judgment is coming for them if they don't repent ASAP. That's not me. I'm just the messenger. That's God Almighty that's going to bring that wrath. Nobody should be celebrating someone coming out the closet as confused about their gender or feeling a sense of pride because they got a little sugar in the tank and think they're supposed to be with the same sex. No, that's a lie. It is pure deception from Satan that's leading millions to hell if they don't jump off of that wide path of destruction and come on over here to the narrow gate that leads to life, the only way. And if you're a Christian, you should know better. I can't speak for secular folks, but we're called to love God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength and to love our neighbor as ourselves. We're supposed to do to others what we want done to us. So all of us Christians, or you proclaiming Christians, you got to call this wicked stuff out. We need to judge righteously. After we get that speck out of our own eye and aren't acting as hypocrites, practicing the same things, we got to go out there and be leaders for the kingdom. We got to guide people into righteousness. Our fallen human race needs to know that we serve a mighty God that cleanses us from all unrighteousness. He transforms hearts and minds into being more like Christ. He doesn't transform genders or care about what you think your sexual preference is. Maybe, just maybe, he has a better plan in store for you than what you think is best for you. Maybe the creator of all things knows everything and his will is a lot better for your life than your will would be. I know it is. And God loves you and I so much that he tells us exactly how to operate if we want to experience everlasting life and peace. He tells us in that Bible. And whether you've been lost or led astray at some point, like many of us have, maybe you're battling an addiction, you lost a loved one, you experienced some trauma or physical, mental abuse. I hear you. Life can be brutal and seem unbearable at times. But no matter what or who led you to where you you are in this current moment, the solution to all our problems is the same. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. His name is Jesus Christ. He's the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. So then, since we have a great high priest who has entered heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to what we believe. This high priest of ours understands our weaknesses, for he faced all the same testings we do, yet he did not sin. So let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God. There we will receive his mercy and we will find grace to help us when we need it most. Amen? I don't know about you, but to me, that's the best news that any of us could ever get. MSNBC, CNN, Fox. All the TikToks and platforms out there today combined couldn't give us a better piece of information than that. That Jesus loves us all so much that he died for us. He put death to death once for all time and gave us a way out of all of the darkness in this world. And if you look around, there's a whole lot of it just waiting to drag us down into the pit of destruction. So if you haven't yet, why not make today, right now, the time to say, no more feeling defeated. Get behind me, Satan. I'm not doing it no more. I'm not buying into your tricks and your schemes because the only plans that the, that the devil has for you are to steal your joy, kill your peace, and destroy your life. That is it. He has nothing good in store for you, and it will only lead to your demise. There's nothing fulfilling that can come out of following these satanic practices that this culture is leaning into. So today, get alone with God. He is always listening to you. He wants you to pray to him, seek his face, and dive into that Bible. Repent and ask him to show you his glory. Amen? Let's walk in the faith no matter what's going on all around us and knowing that the best is yet to come when our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ returns someday. But I, I could keep going on this for days. I'm going to end my little sermon rant right there. I'd love to hear your thoughts on all of this. Drop a comment below saying Christ is King if you made it to this point in the video and let's keep the conversation rolling. Don't forget to hit that like button. Subscribe if you're not already. Ring that notification bell so you get notified anytime I post a new video. If you like what I'm doing over here and you want to show a little extra love and support, make sure you go check out our website down below in the description section. That way you can get all the awesome shirts you see me wearing in every single video. They're all made by my beautiful wife. This one says created with a 
purpose. It has it on the chest and on the sleeve. It's based on Ephesians 2, verse 10. I like mine a little baggy, so it seems a little extra room to move and groove. But we got all different sizes, ranging from itty-bitty extra small to big, big and hefty 5X, a bunch of colors, different designs, all of that. I'm sure you can find something that you like or a great gift for someone that you love. Outside of that, you can always join the Gibson family here on YouTube and become a member. You can buy me a coffee. You can join the Patreon family. All those links are down below as well. By no means do you have to do any of that. Just showing up and allowing my freckle face to rant at you for a few minutes. I am greatly appreciative. I love y'all. I cannot thank you enough. Until next time, I'll be praying for you. Godspeed. I'm gone.